Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is September 24th, 2017. And um, I'd like to share some um, new understanding I receive on the Revelation 12 sign, as well as um, um, just some, some more information and more revelation that was given to me on previous dreams or a previous dream and um, just kind of what the Lord has been showing me over the past few weeks, you know. And I'm always amazed, like, when the Lord showed me things, you know, but I think this is, like, the most profound and the, the greatest revelation which he, he has shown me because, you know, it, it kind of shapes the way that we view Scripture. And it, it he revealed, basically, the Holy Spirit revealed mystery that you know a lot of us you know may question or wonder about you know the book of revelation is such a difficult book to understand you know and especially the the book um or the chapter sorry i should say of revelation 12 you know because i always kind of wondered with that with that chapter you know i always found it difficult to understand because it is the one chapter in the book of Revelation which is linked to an event, a timed event, you know, so there's a date for that. So even though we know we're not in the tribulation, I could never understand how even though we're not in the tribulation, but at the same time we can see the Revelation 12 sign which took place yesterday and that was September 23rd, you know, most people thought that it would have been the rapture and you know it's it's a hard chapter to understand it's hard revelation to understand you know not many, many people understand it and you know the Holy Spirit showed me some revelation on this a few weeks ago and I was just kind of sitting there I was reading scripture and then he just all he poured it into me you know and I prayed on it I've been praying on it you know, for the Lord to show me, you know, uh, more confirmation and more understanding into it because, you know, what he was showing me was so profound that it's like, it, it kind of shapes the way that we view scripture and it's going to shape the way in which we view this book, you know. So for me, you know, to receive confirmation this morning, finally I receive a dream after like maybe two weeks of praying on it. And, you know, I just left it to the Lord because like I always say, the Lord showed me so much already that like, I'm so thankful that I, I, I kind of like, I don't want, I wouldn't say I don't want to bother him, you know, but like, I find it hard to ask for more, you know. So I just say, Lord, like if you want to show me, if you're willing to give me understanding, you know, on this. You know, I'm here and I'll I'll share it. You know, I'm I'm here to share and do whatever you want. So, um, you know, I, I just left it in his hands. And then for him to really give me an answer this morning, the day after, you know, it was like so incredible. So, you know, most people, when they saw the sign coming, and most people, I saw a lot of posts on it where most people thought it was a rapture or most people thought it was the end of the world sort of thing. There was a little very little understanding into it and um you know we can kind of we can figure out what it means like the woman in it means um israel so we kind of get an understanding of the meaning some of the translation but we don't really understand what the sign mean and you know the holy spirit was showing me you know what the sign means or what i believe you know and it was like I said, it's revelation, which it shapes the way that we view the Bible, you know, or we're going to view scripture. So I was like, I can't share this unless I know for sure, unless I receive revelation, which I now have received. So um, it kind of starts, let me start a little way back. So um, this first started a few months back. I think it was in May or June, I received a dream and i shared it it was a dream called dream of jesus being funny and mischievous and i'm not sure if you've seen that but have a look i'll leave the link in the bottom but in that on the thumbnail on that video i 
pretty much put together you know um, how it looks so basically in that dream the Lord appeared to me he walked past me and you know something I never shared in that video as well but afterwards I realized you know that that dream how we walked past me it was the same way in which God um, he allowed his glory to pass Moses you know, so I didn't add that scripture at the time. It was like a few days after I posted that video. You know, I realized that that scripture was, that dream was referring to that scripture. So the Lord passed by me. He allowed his glory to, to pass by me. And part of this glory was he was drawing, like, he was being real funny with me. And he draw um, something on a paper. He was basically um, playing jokes with me, you know. And I was, I was finding it so funny and so hilarious, you know, that God actually plays jokes with us and, you know, he's like really mischievous. And um, in that thumbnail, I pretty much put it together exactly how it looked inside of the dream that Jesus drew. But I didn't realize at the time, like I didn't take it like sometimes you might see something in a dream and it may be the smallest little thing and we may think that it means nothing. And it's, you know, more than likely the most important part of the of the dream or the meaning of it. So if you look on the thumbnail on it, I put together, you know, like I said, what he drew. But on the very bottom, I shared in the video where he 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 his handwriting he drew on it. He he wrote down his handwriting and his handwriting was in the form he put it in the S. So I saw the S. I was like I was looking at the S. And I didn't think much of it. And, you know, just over the past um, week and a half, maybe two weeks, there was um, a sister in Christ who shared a video, and I stumbled on her video. And, you know, it was right around the same time when the Holy Spirit was revealing to me the meaning of the Revelation 12, but I didn't connect all of the dots yet. But she shared in her video where um, the Lord showed her in her dream you know that there was leaves there was a tree in her dream and all of the leaves had s's on it and the s's were falling from it like kind of like fall you know but instead of leaves falling it was s's falling off of the tree and then she saw and she couldn't understand the meaning of it but she saw another sister in christ who had a dream similar and the lord was showing her s's as well and she thought that the s's pointed to september so as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's what it means. So like the Holy Spirit um, reminded me of that S that I had in the dream with the, you know, with Jesus being mischievous. So I think from way back then, from May or June, whenever it was, I'll put the link in, like I said, but the Lord was pointing me towards the month of September for some reason. Now, I'm not saying the rapture or anything, but he was just, pointing me towards, you know, looking at the month of September. And, um, you know, after that, the Lord, I shared in, I think it was a, a video before that, where the Lord kept showing me the number 4 to 7. He just kept showing me 4 to 7, 4 to 7, 4 to 7. And, you know, it's increased sometimes, and then over time it decreases. And, you know, everywhere I would look, if I press my phone, the battery charge, you know, just at the right time, something will say, look at my phone, and the battery charge may be 4 to 7%, or right at the right moment, I could be walking, and then I take my phone out to check the time, and it's like 6, 4 to 7, or I press the battery saver button on it, and it saves it like 4 to 7 minutes, or the time left on the battery is like 27 hours and 4 to 7 minutes, something, you know, so everywhere four to seven four to seven and over time you know before the lord was showing me that that refers to the fall of babylon isaiah four to seven you know so from way back then i was telling people you know judgment is going to happen this year judgment god is showing judgment so if anyone telling you prosperity and god is showing prosperity i'm telling you they're not hearing from god and, you know, of course, no one believed it, whatever. And now everyone's kind of starting to see what I'm saying is, is true. So, you know, over time, it, it slowed down and then it picks back up. And then over the past month, it has been like incredible. One day, 
I saw it like at one moment, like from one thing to the next, I saw four different times, four to seven. It was like I tried to make a call and I checked my balance. It was like four to seven cents. And then right at that time, it was like 11, four to seven or 10, four to seven or something. And then I look at my phone battery, like I said, four to seven. Or I go into the store and um, my, my change is like, something four to seven so it's like i know god is showing me and um there's always like a, a nudge to to check this or to do these things at the most random time so i know it's like the lord showing me that judgment is coming you know and um now we can see a lot of the things that are being played out so you know to jump from that you know um i kind of go into the okay the sign there's the sign of um of jonah given which was august 21st and um the reason why i say i don't think you know most people was saying that the rapture would be on september 23rd and i never believed that like for one you know um god isn't gonna come at a time when we all expect him to you know, he's going to come when we least expect him to, you know, um, as he said in scripture. And, um, you know, I just never believe it. But the main reason why I never believe it also is because scripturally, it doesn't make sense. You know, it doesn't align with scripture. And when I say that, what I mean is, okay, we know the sign of Jonah was given, right? So we had the total solar eclipse on August 21st, right? Now, that same sign was given to um, Nineveh and when Jonah was sent by God to tell them that destruction would come, you know, that same sign, when they look back historically, that same sign was given to them. This is why people repented. It wasn't just because of Jonah giving the sign, you know, but because of our give, preaching the message, but it was because also the sign. But if you look according to scripture, in Jonah 3 verse 4, um, God gave Nineveh 40 days to repent. So Jonah set out on the first day of his walk in the city and proclaimed, In 40 days Nineveh will be demolished. So if August 31st was the sign, if we had 40 days to repent, God has given us 40 days to repent and come to him, which would leave it, um, the 40th day would be September 30th, which happens to fall on Yom, Yom Kippur, one of the Jewish um, days, you know, um, festivals. And um, if the rapture was to happen before that, you know, it wouldn't make sense technically, you know. We know that God relented from destroying Nineveh. But he keeps showing me that judgment is coming. He's not going to relent from this because scripturally we are in the end times and scripturally the um, tribulation must begin. So he keeps showing me this constantly, constantly, more and more and it's increasing, you know. So since we know judgment is going to fall, if we look back scripturally, technically he would give us 40 days to repent. You know, or for people to come to them like the last 40 days, you know, at least. So, I personally don't believe that the rapture would occur in September. You know, that's my opinion. So, um, that kind of squashes the whole thing where people are looking for, for God to come right now. I don't think he's going to come. He's going to give, I believe he'll give, you know, he wants to give everyone a chance because he loves us all, you know, and he wants to give everyone that last moment, that last second to come to him, you know. And um, now regarding the revelation sign, so like I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord began to show me this and it was so much information. I was like reading scripture and then all of a sudden this flood of information just came in and it was so much that he was connecting, connecting so much. It was like he downloaded everything into me. That's the best way to explain it. But it was like so overwhelming. 
that I just started writing things on, putting this there, here and there, and I was like so overwhelmed that I was like, wow, but it was so much that I couldn't share it without more confirmation, without hearing more from the Lord, you know, but everything made sense to me, you know. And so, you know, after, like I said, after this morning, I got some revelation, I was like, wow, there we go, another confirmation. So, I'll start off by saying this, because it will get a little bit technical. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. But um, I'll start with saying this, you know, as we know, with all prophecy and all revelation given by God, it's not until the event takes place, until what is prophesied takes place, then we can look back and then we have an understanding. You know, then we can say, oh, this was what, God was saying, or, oh, this is what this means, you know, so prophetically, um, things are easy to understand once they're taking place, you know, um, very, very few times do we understand it before it happens, you know, <clears throat> so if you look back, you know, I was reading John, the book of John 12, and I saw this this same instance happened. So this is when he began to reveal to me. In John 12, I was reading John 12, verse 14 to 16. And it says, Jesus found a young, a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear no more, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, However, when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. So it was like these things were already written in the, in the book of the prophets, that Jesus would do these things, that the Messiah would do these things. And when he was actually doing it, like when he was walking into you know Jerusalem on the donkey, they didn't realize it was like it was hidden from them. They didn't realize that this was written about him until after he died. Then they looked back and they, you know, maybe searched the scriptures and then they saw, look at this. Our king actually came in. We witnessed this and we didn't even realize it was written here for us. You know, so this is why I say we oftentimes they don't see it until after. The same thing can be seen over here. Uh, once I got further down in John chapter 12, verse 20 to 23. So this, when I read this, this is when the Holy Spirit began. The minute I read it, it was like he just downloaded everything and he started to connect the dots to the Revelation 12 sign, like out of nowhere. So, now some Greeks, so this is John 12, verse 20 to 23. And it says, now some Greeks were among them, were among those who went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested of him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus replied to them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So, so not realizing it, that day, you know, that was a sign given to the disciples that the time of the Gentiles has come because we see the Greeks who were Gentiles. The Greeks, after Christ went to everyone, you know, to every nation and he was doing his, his works and his miracles, you know, and after his people rejected him, then the Greeks came, which represented the Gentiles. And as soon as you know, the, the Gentiles, the Greeks came to the disciples and said, we want to see Jesus. Jesus knew, it was like, okay, now it is my time. Now it is, they like said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So now it is my time that the message will be given to the Gentiles, you know, that the good news will be spread across the world. So he knew that that was like a sign, but they didn't see it at the time. I'm sure they didn't notice. They didn't have a clue because had they noticed, in the book of Acts, when we read the book of Acts, Peter couldn't, couldn't understand. If you read the whole book of Acts, you know, God had to give Peter a vision 
you know, of the animals coming out of the ark. And then, you know, if you follow the whole book of Acts 10, then you'll understand that it took them a while to figure out that God wants to give the message to the Gentiles, right? So, um, I'm sure after, you know, after all of that took place with, with Peter and then he probably met up with Philip and Andrew way after Christ was um, glorified, you know, after he died, I'm sure that he realized, like these, Philip and Andrew realized, like, look at that. So maybe this sign of the Greek coming to Jesus meant that the message would be spent, spread to the, to the Gentiles. So they missed the sign. There was a sign given and they didn't understand it until when they were actually, you know, sharing the message to the Gentiles or maybe when Peter came to them and then they looked back, then they would have understood it. So we see that there was first a sign given way before and then when they were actually doing it, then they may have looked back and understood what the sign meant. In the same way, the Holy Spirit was connecting these two examples, when I read them, to the Revelation 12 sign. So we know that when John received the, the message, or received the vision, sorry, of, um, of, of the book of Revelation, whenever he received this vision given to him by God, when he saw the part Revelation 12, I believe it was a two-part vision. So he wasn't just looking at one vision. He, he actually looked at two separate, um, two separate events. That's the best way to explain it. So the first being yesterday's event, which was the Revelation 12 sign, right? So we had that sign given, which is before. And, you know, obviously it is a sign to the, to many people don't understand what the, the sign is, but when I finish, then it'll make sense. But, the, which is a sign given before, let me just say that. It's a sign given to the, to the nation. It could be to the church or it could be to the, to the nation of Israel, right? It could be to both. I think it's a sign to both. But later on, as we know, in the tribulation, the nation of Israel will be here. The church will be gone during the tribulation, right? Because if you look back in the book of Revelation, even the book of Revelation, when we, and you know, I, I did a Bible study in the church with this, I didn't even realize that this was written in the book of Revelation or, you know, you, you don't see it, you read the book of Revelation, you know. We've seen other parts of the Bible where the rapture, we know that the rapture takes place before the tribulation, but I've never seen it before in the book of Revelation until I did a Bible study with the church and then they explained it. And I was like, wow, look at that. So in Revelation, um, I think when he got the vision in the beginning, in Revelation 4, you know, and he said he looked in heaven and a door was open. And the first voice I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, and it said, come up here and I will show you must, what must take place. But he's in the vision. So if he's seeing the vision and it's saying, come up here, that means he's telling the church to come up, right? He's not telling John to come up. He's telling the church to come up because he's already in the vision. And I didn't understand that, that in the book of Revelation, it tells you that there must be a pre-tribulation rapture, right? So this is why I said I could never understand, even though we know it's pre-tribulation, how the Revelation 12 sign can come before. And like I said, now it's a two-part vision. So, you know, yesterday we saw the sign, the first part, you know, I think that when he was looking at it, he saw the first sign, which was yesterday, which was a sign to the nation, or to the people of God. And then... The second part was actually in the tribulation. So the first, you know, was yesterday, the sign Israel that God is shifting. Okay, so this sign is showing that God is shifting his attention back to the nation of Israel and the time of the Gentiles has ended. So just like how the Greeks came to Jesus, 
And then that was the sign saying that the time of the Gentiles has begun. There must be a shift back because we know that God is going to focus his attention back to the nation of Israel during the tribulation. So this shifting back, there must be a sign given. You know, and this sign was a sign given yesterday. So this is the shift back, but they're not going to understand it. Just like how the disciples didn't understand what the Greeks coming to Jesus meant or what Jesus coming on the, on the donkey into the city meant until after he was glorified. They're not going to understand this until they're in the tribulation and until they receive the message of Jesus Christ because they have no idea of the book of Revelation according to their scripture because they don't know the New Testament. But when they come to Christ and once Christ is being born to them, which this is a sign that Christ will be born to the nation of Israel, He'll, there will be a birth of Christ to the nation of Israel, then they will understand that, hey, this sign given way back then was actually for us, telling us that our time had come. You know, and that the time of the Gentiles has ended, and that God is focusing His attention on us, and we miss Him, and you know, they're going to realize the the magnitude of their their mistake, you know. So this is the sign for them, I believe, you know. So in verse 3 is another scene. So like I was saying, in the vision... I believe John looked at one part, which was, like I said yesterday, and then he saw the next part, which was the in the tribulation, the next scene of it. So verse 3 is another scene saying this. And just like in the book of Acts, you know, they didn't notice it until after. Sorry, I just have everything written down, so I'm just trying to follow that. Um... So Jesus is showing that he's just about to be, you know, re reborn or rebirth to them you know and this is what the whole sign is saying because we know that the woman represents israel you know and the child who will rule with the scepter is christ so how can christ be reborn but other than to his own people because they don't know him you know so verse 5 says that and her child was caught up to god so this signifies that the child being the church was raptured before the time of persecution, right? Which would signify a former and latter event, separating this part of the vision into two scenes. So that just kind of separates what I was saying. So, you know, um, we see the first part being yesterday, but from verse 5, we see that the church was raptured, right? So there, it's like a two-part scene. We're still here. So it must be a two-part scene, you know what I mean, if, if you get my drift. So the sign given before the tribulation and then the sign given during the tribulation when the nation of Israel is being persecuted. So, you know, like I said, there was so much revelation to take in. And I hope this kind of makes sense. I hope, you know, everyone kind of get the drift of what I'm saying, you know, when I don't want to keep repeating myself, but... I just want to make sure people get the drift of what I'm saying. You know, when God gave John the vision of the book of Revelation, and when he got to, you know, obviously chapter 12, which he wrote in chapter 12, he didn't just look at one event, he looked at two separate events, which was the before the tribulation, which was a sign to the people um, of Israel, saying that God is now refocusing his attention to, to them. Obviously, they're not going to understand the sign. But when they're in the tribulation, which was the next scene, they're going to look back and realize that they missed the sign, that the sign was given, and that, you know, it was a sign to them, saying that God will focus his attention. But, but by that time, they will be persecuted, you know, which we will get to further. Um, so, like I said, I received confirmation on this this morning. So... I had, you know, a dream. It was one dream, and it was three separate scenes in it. And, um, you know, all dreams from God are different, but like I say, you can always tell the essence of God's dreams. You know, you, you just, I can't explain it. It's hard to explain the spirit, but um, I knew this was from God. 
Um, but with this dream, right? Okay, it was like separate scenes. And it was like some dreams I can have control of over the whole thing. Some dreams it's more feeling. Um, I could feel the presence of God more. I could feel, you know, my senses are heightened. But this one, it was kind of like I was being moved through the scene. So I saw everything like crystal clear. And then things were being pointed out to me uh, real vividly. But it was just kind of like the best way to explain it was like if you're on a roller coaster, you know, you just roll into and you're just observing everything. It was like that. So I was just observing everything as I went through. And then a lot of things were being pointed out to me really vividly. Um, so in this, the first scene, I was in my mother's house. And I came out of the room and I started to walk into the kitchen. And when I started to walk into the kitchen, there were like moths um, flying all around the room. Different kind of moths, right? And... They were all flying around, and at first I thought they were bats. So I kind of, I was kind of like dodging them, moving out of the way. Um, but like I said, I just continued walking, moving, and then I got to, you know, I walked past the kitchen. At first they were in the kitchen, and then they flew into the laundry room, which was the next room over. They flew into the laundry room, and that's where I stopped, and I was watching them for a while, and then. They started to transform. Two of them were sitting there in the laundry room on the ironing board. And the head of it began to transform into a bird. And um, I, I forgot what the meaning of bird was. But anyways, we'll get to that. But yeah, they started to transform into birds. And then when I opened the door, I continued to move. I opened the door and they flew out. The garage door opened. They flew out through the garage door. And then I walked to the garage door and then I stopped. And then that first scene ended, but it flew into another scene. It kind of had a flow into it. So again, I turned and I knew it, it had shifted, but it was like I was still in the same room. So I knew that was one scene of it, like God was trying to show me something there. And then this would be a separate scene, but it still flowed into the dream. So I turned left. Like I was saying, I was standing in the garage, and then I turned left, and I started to walk, and then there was this cat, and it wasn't my mother's cat, because my mother has a white cat. It was, This one was like a yellow, orange sort of cat. And it walked around, and there was this box on the floor in the garage, and the cat walked into the box. And I went, and I took a light. And I went to shine in, but as soon as I got on my knees and tried to go close to the cat, it was like I could start feeling like I shouldn't be doing this. I, I started to feel like a little bit of um, fear because it was like the cat was being so protective. She was being so overly protective and I could just feel her protectiveness, you know. It was like just emanating from her, so I could feel that so much. That she was just being overprotective. And then when I looked in good, I kind of shined the light. So I knew when when I got that impression from her that she was being real protective, I dimmed the light and I kind of turned the light away. But when I turned away the light, I could see that there was kittens. There were there was like a, a topperware sort of... Um, <laughs> it was like a topperware sort of, um, of jar. And there were kittens all inside of it. Right, so I didn't understand what it meant at first, but anyways, we'll get to that. So there were kittens all inside, and she was protecting the kittens that were that were sitting inside of of the jar. And then the scene changed again. So I turned to the right and I walked out, and then I came outside. As soon as I came outside, something grabbed me by my shoulders and picked me up, and I like flew. I immediately flew away, you know, and um, this thing, I knew that it was an angel. I couldn't see it, but I knew it was an angel holding on to me. But I also knew I could feel like her, the, the presence of like peace and comfort. And then I knew like something told me there's an angel who picked me up and I started to be lifted up and started to fly. 
And then I knew I could feel this heavy presence on my back, like something was chasing me. And I knew it was like a demon or evil spirit or something like that. And it was just chasing me a lot. Right? So, you know, it was like she was picking me up and then she would fly me away. And I knew she was taking me to somewhere safe. And then she would drop me. Or maybe it was a heat, but um, the angel would drop me, right? And then I would fall and then I would start to continue running, running, running. And then I knew that the angel was fighting this thing off to protect me. And then every now and then she would come again and pick me up and continue taking me to safety. And just the intense, like the intense fear that I had on my back the whole time. It was like I woke up this morning and like I was tired. My legs were tired. Like I was, I was running so much because of it. And, you know, I just woke up tired, exhausted, because I was trying to escape. The fear was so much on my back of this thing. Like, I knew there was a spirit there. It was like I could hear it. I could feel it, you know, just right behind me. And I was just running for my life constantly. And then I started to hear, um, like, um, church music playing, like uh, worship music. I began to hear worship music, and I looked to the left, and I saw this, dim white light at first it was really dim but it was only it was all dark around everything was dark and then except for this little um this little bit of white light that i started to see coming through and as i looked closer i knew that it was a church and i continued to run and run and as soon as i got close the evil spirit left it was like i knew that it had left me and um as soon yeah as soon as i got close it stopped and then I started to run, angel left, and then I started to run, to, to run to the door, and I could hear the worship music more and more and more, and then I knew, like, okay, I'm safe, I'm in a safe spot, and then I opened the door, and I just remember that there was, like, such fear, you know, in me, and I looked in, and there were other people inside, and I knew this was, like, a place of safety, there was, like, worship inside, there was lights inside, it was bright, and then I went in, closed the door, and that was it. I woke up, you know. So when I decided to check the meaning of it, you know, the interpretation of it, I realized that a kitchen, you know, the first scene I saw was the moth, you know, the moths in the kitchen. So in dreams are often, a kitchen are often intuitive or prophetic in nature where anyone or anything you see in the kitchen symbolizes something that is about to happen. So it, it just means that, you know, that this is imminent. Whatever I'm seeing is imminent. So that's the translation I got from the moths being there. And then the moths themselves, a symbol of transient wealth. And transient means, you know, only lasting for a short time. Or a person working or staying in a place for a short time. So in this first scene, I think this represented the church. God was showing me the church, you know, that, you know, it's imminent and um, the moths represent that it is, you know, only lasting for a short time or a person working or staying in a place for a short time. You know, and then the moths flew into the laundry room and then a laundry room is usually associated with... Um, a purification process which we know right now we're being purified like the Lord is purifying us so much you know in this time and um, cats are okay so let me stop with that part so that was the first the first one right and the first scene and I forgot to, to write down the meaning of the birds the birds transformation because I saw right before they flew out the moths transformed into the birds. So I have to, I'll write it in, in the comment section, um, the meaning of the birds. And then it flew away. So I knew the flying away could mean like the rapture, right? So I feel God was showing me that we're being purified, you know, that we're, um, it is imminent. And then, you know, it's only lasting for a short time, you know, or we only here working for a short period. And then, it was like he was showing me the first scene was what will take place before, right? So he was giving us like the first part of the Revelation 12. 
um, sign, I guess, you know, where the the church will leave because it says in, in verse 5 that they were caught up to God, right? So we know that that is imminent. And then the second scene, you know, I believe that this, the first scene was, I think, has to do with the church. And then the second scene and the third scene has to do with the nation Israel. So when I saw the cat, so the cat is symbolic of rebirth. And resurrection so like I said you know Christ is going to be when the phone number comes in and the Gentiles leave you know or the church leaves God will focus his attention back to the nation of Israel so obviously they have to be reborn into the message because at the moment they don't believe in Jesus Christ but they will believe in Jesus Christ after when they see all of these things take place. You know, then they're going to realize that they missed their Messiah and that God had turned away from them. They were punished, but now God will turn back to his people. So, like I said, the cat is symbolic of rebirth and resurrection, you know, which, like I said, represents the rebirth of the nation Israel. Then the kittens represent young or merely defenseless Christians which we know that they will be young and defenseless because they're going to be weak. And this is part of the reason why I believe they will be taken into the wilderness because it says um, that, you know, if you check Revelation 12, it says that they'll be taken into the wilderness. I think it's verse 6. Um, let me read it. Okay, so the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God to be fed there for 1260 days. You know, so I believe that was what God was showing me that, you know, they're going to be, um, he was showing me the Revelation 12, 6 with that scene. You know, so the woman was fled, you know, the nation was fled. They're going to be young Christians. And when... It says she's going to be fed. I don't think it just means with food. I think it means spiritually because they're going to just have an understanding of who Jesus is. So they'll need time to, you know, grow in Christ, grow in God. You know, the Spirit will be given to them. So they have to um, learn basically all that we know. They have to relearn everything that they, that they knew and, you know, um, everything that they believe. So... I think it's more of a spiritual feeling why they will be in, in the wilderness. So that's kind of what I got by seeing the young kittens, you know, because like I said, it, it means kittens represent young Christians or defenseless Christians. They're going to be defenseless when they're persecuted and, you know, the devil's going to come after them. So I believe this is why there's a a, um, a place, you know, set aside for them during this time and then the third scene to me was the revelation 12 verse 13 to 14 you know me being picked up and then i was taken to a place of safety so um that says when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she could fly from the serpent's presence to her place in the wilderness. When she was fed for a, for a time, uh, times and half a time, you know. So I think that represented what took place in my dream, you know, where this the wings were picking me up. It was an angel picked me up and then it took me to a place of safety, you know, where where I was fed for a time. And then times and half a time, you know. So to end this, I say, you know, that though the sign has been given, you know, most people would say, well, if the sign's been given and what you're saying is true, then the rapture should have taken place. But not exactly, not technically, because um, according to scripture, you know, Romans 11, verse 25, verse 27 um, to 27, you know, we know that God won't, the rapture won't take place 
until the full number of the Gentiles come in. So even though the sign is given, that's a sign to show, okay, um, it's a sign to the people showing them, to the nation, sorry, to the people or to the nation of Israel, you know, showing them that this is your sign showing you that I'm going to focus, God is showing them that I'm going to focus my attention back on you. And it's a sign to us showing us that our time is gone, you know, our time of grace and the time of the Gentiles has ended. But we still have to wait for that full number to come in and only God knows that number. You know, so Romans 11 verse 25 to 27 says, So that you will not be conceited, brothers. I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery. A partial hardening has come to Israel until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the liberator will come from Zion. He will turn away godlessness from Jacob, and this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So it's just like what I said, you know, when the full number comes in, then God will give the command, and then he focuses his attention back to Israel, and then, you know, he will be their liberator, and he will free them, he'll renew their covenant, you know. And uh, like I said, no one knows that they are our, but God the Father. <clears throat> Sorry, God the Father himself, you know. So we just have to, you know, continue what we're doing, you know, just press forward and, you know, just trust in God and, you know, just purify yourself, keep our lamps filled with oil and, you know, just look up for our king, you know. So don't be discouraged. I know there may be people who are discouraged, who are hoping that the rapture would have taken place. I personally never believe that because I think it'll be a time when no one will know, no one will expect it, you know. So just, um, yeah, just keep your eyes on God and, you know, stay blessed. So thank you for listening. I hope, you know, everyone understood what I said and get the gist of the meaning of, of everything. So yeah, so have a blessed one. Thank you for listening.